I could get my judges back to the stage. We'll get started. Okay, if you don't have simex.secondmarket.com, go there and vote. Um, no surprise here. Uh, in the Simex trading of the last uh, group, we had Room 77 at $250, Lockify 195, right behind that, FTW at 180, Stomp.io at 135, Storkbrokers 105, and Screener.co 70. Um, those are virtual dollars. But wow, that is interesting. Look at the graphs. Hmm. Stomp.io was doing really good, and then I guess somebody else came in and, and uh, took some of their shares or their money. Hmm. Okay, we've got an amazing uh, group this afternoon, and we're going to show, let's see, uh, five more companies, then we have a great lunch, and I'm going to ask the grand jury once again to make their way to the launch pad, find your favorite companies, and at 1.30, meet me back here, We'll caucus and discuss which six we'll put on stage later today. Uh, and then tonight we'll have cocktails and um, sometime around 7, 7.30 we'll come back in here and actually give the awards. The grand jury, not myself, uh, will uh, decide the winners in their private deliberations behind the stage. Each of the 1.0 and 2.0 categories have five awards. Uh, best overall, the winner of the 1.0 and the 2.0 competitions. Then there's best technological achievement, best presentation, best design and UI and best business model. We're also going to probably give an award or two to the um, launch pad companies, but we haven't decided on that exactly. Okay, so let's please welcome to the stage Life Proof Cases.
get a free mustard cover. Wow. Um, so many questions to ask. Judges, where do we start? Yeah, that, that, that was this morning in the Swisher boys' household. Um, is but, is uh, that a sick version of squirrel fishing? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's on, we, that activity is on Stomp.io. Yeah. Now, do these things exist on the market? They, they do. I see them in the Apple Store. Well, how do you, there's lots of these kind of things, waterproofy kind of things. Scoop well, there's down. nothing you can stick in your pocket. There's nothing that life-proofs your life, so you have complete freedom to go wherever you want, whenever you want. And it looks just like your iPhone. It's barely larger. Yeah. It's much thinner, you mean, in Ter terms of thinner and... It's only one sixteenth of an inch thicker than the iPhone, and it weighs less than an ounce. <laughs> and it's waterproof, it's dirt-proof, it's shock-proof, egg-proof, mayo-proof, kid-proof, whatever proof you want. You put it on, you forget about it, and from there, you're life-proof wherever you go. What, what happens when inevitably something goes wrong, um, even, if it's the, even if it's quote unquote the user's fault and they, and they blame you for it and there's you know, plenty of bad press and so on and so forth? Well, it's a little bit like uh, use with care, like scuba equipment. You know, bad things can happen if you don't follow the instructions. Um, same with underwater cameras. So if you're going into a particularly hazardous environment like underwater, you follow the instructions, you'll be okay. Naturally, we would cover a user for any manufacturing defects, but not for user error. <laughs> And why does it cost so much? I mean, it's sixty-nine dollars. Sixty-nine dollars. Because when I, I like balk at the twenty-nine dollar piece of plastic, I have to buy now. How do you? What's well, the price point? Why is it that high? Well, for twenty-nine dollars, you get a little rubber bumper, and that's all it does. And if you drop it on the concrete, it's probably going to break. Right. Ours is mill spec, so you can drop it from six feet onto concrete on any side, any surface. It is uh, IP68, which means that you can swim underwater and actually take underwater movies. Can we switch to a quick underwater movie so you can see the clarity here, please? So you can actually use it as an underwater camera. It replaces all of those functions. So now, look in the swimming pool here. That's direct with the iPhone 4. And we also have them for the iPad and soon for the Android and BlackBerry platforms too. So we're not a case, we're about life-proofing you, so wherever you go, you no longer have to think about, do I leave it in the car, or do I leave it somewhere else when I'm at the bar? It's all good. How, how hard was this to do? What, what kind of intellectual property is there here? This actually um, has been in development for, for 22 months. It's the world's most expensive iPhone case. We spent over a million dollars on development, and we went back to the drawing board five times. We've got a full-time patent attorney on staff, and we've actually filed 420 pages of patents. We've got 20 new innovation and invention areas, which allows us to put so much protection into such an incredibly small case. So, so I take it you're not that worried about cheap Chinese manufactured competition? Well, I'm not sure if you trust your iPhone, a $10 iPhone case from Lucky Dragon Incorporated Where do you uh, think for they going make in the, the swimming iPhones? pool. <laughs> What's that? Where do you think they make the iPhones? Well, that, that's, that's not the saying. problem. I mean, we make them in Far East too, but I'm talking about as far as brand goes, you know, if you're talking... I'm, I'm, I'm just wonder, I'm, I'm wondering if you have some sort of proprietary advantage, you know, given this tech, the, what the technology is here, if it's replicable effectively. Well, I think anything is replicable. It comes down to it's uh, solid branding and also solid IP protection. And we're pursuing both of those funds very, very uh, vigorously, which I think is as good as you can do in America. I finally got it open. It's open proof, too. Um, <laughs> this thing is really on the front is really thin. What is that? It feels like, flat, like it could break easily. Yeah, it feels cheap. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually meant to be very, very lightweight. We felt the lightweight and small size looking just like the iPhone is what people actually want. And what we've done is we've tested it independently to IP68 and to military specifications, so you're not going to be able to break this. This plat, well, it's the kind they used to, with children's toys, obviously. What, uh, what, what, but what is it? I want to know what it's, it is. It's actually PETN okay. with an anti-reflective coating and a scratch-proof uh, coating on it. Okay. What's your uh, marketing or distribution strategy? Uh, initially, we are um, in discussions. We can't name the companies, but there's a, a couple of carriers here which happen to um, carry the iPhone in the United States and that we're in discussions with. And, uh, and also, we expect that you'll be able to buy it from sports uh, retail stores, um, potentially REI, um, you know, those sorts of stores, as well as online directly. 
Awesome. Well, let's hear. And um, I see you gave one to each of the judges. What about the other six, seven hundred people in the room? <laughs> hey, if you come by our booth down the back there, um, you know we'll we'll take care of uh, life proofing you here in uh, quick order. So, thank you very much. I'm not certain if that was uh, an offer for a free one or not, but uh, I'm going to go by your booth. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who like it. Very well done. Um, Next up is Minglebird. Let's get Minglebird on the stage. Okay. Wow, some Minglebird fans in the audience. Awesome. Okay, Minglebird. Okay, life proof cases. You now have to leave the stage. Please get off the stage, life proof cases. Time to stop marketing and time to leave the stage. Leave the stage. Thank you. You're slowing down the event. Life proof cases, leave the stage. Wow. I don't think he does. Get off the stage. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to get the hook. Sandman. Uh, okay. Let's hear it from Engelberg. Hi, I'm Lloyd, and this is my co founder, Christopher, and we are Minglebird. Minglebird creates mobile apps that instantly connect people face to face. We believe the value of meeting someone new cannot be fully realized via keyboard alone. It has to be experienced. We're going to introduce you to two products today. The first, Minglebird, which bridges the gap between virtual and real world connections by making a game out of introductions. Designed for conferences and networking events, it's a free app with in-game sponsorship opportunities. And I'm proud to announce it's available for iPhone today and Droid probably next week. So let's play. An event organizer signs on to Minglebird.com and creates a game code. The user downloads the app, creates a profile, and enters the game code to join. They're now ready to meet people. The rules are simple. As the clock runs, the more people you meet, the more points you earn, and you might win a prize just for meeting people. All your key controls are on this play screen. You can see your score, how much time is left, and more importantly, your next target. When you meet them, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Lloyd. Hey, Christopher. Nice to meet you. Click the found button and snap a photo to earn points. It's that easy. Unfortunately, removing my double chin will not be that easy. Uh, <laughs> You're checking in with people, not places. One of the more valuable features is the connection screen, where you can see all the people you've met, and you can add any of them directly to your address book. Minglebird works great at large gatherings, but we want to open it up beyond events so that people can meet anytime and anywhere. Imagine this. You're standing on a stage giving a presentation before 100 people. You could really use a beer right now. I know it's early in the morning, and you're thinking what everyone else, what is everyone else thinking? Some might be bored, but more likely they're thinking, this is a kick-ass presentation. And better yet, hopefully they're thinking, I'd love a beer after this kick-ass presentation. What we're about to show you is a demo that we currently have un under development. Introducing Minglebird Pro, which provides a way for people to meet based on real-time location and interests immediately. After signing in, you're taken to Mingle Words. Mingle Words are like hashtags, and they're your opportunity to express what's on your mind right now. So for me, the two constants in my life are poker and sushi. They're always there. But here at launch, I'm looking for developers, and I need that beer. Now we're ready to mingle. Four choices. Who's nearby, Mingle Words, Fox, and I'm feeling lucky, which returns one random search result. For the sake of this narrative, let's see who's nearby. 325 search results. Uh, the default setting is 10 miles, so let's narrow our search by clicking on filter. We can filter three ways, location, gender, and interest. So for location, let's change that from 10 miles to one mile. I don't care if it's male or female. And for interest, let's view the mingle words. Remember, mingle words are what people are thinking about right now. We can look for a specific word by typing at the top, or we can scan the list to see what we might be interested in. We can also see the relative location of the person who used the word. So there's trusty, reliable beer. Let's choose that. Let's see what else we got. Oh, how about Jason Nation? 
And what else? Lo and behold, kick-ass presentation, great. We've got three, let's see what we get. Three, much more manageable. That guy in the middle looks familiar, Tyler. I know he works in Mahalo, I'd like to meet him. Let's send him a mingle request. When can I meet him? Maybe 30 minutes from now. Where do I want to meet him? Definitely the hotel lobby bar, and we can send him a brief message. I see you work with Jason Calacanis, let's grab a beer. Now we're taken back to the main menu. Oh, Jason Calacanis has sent me a mingle request. Let's view it. Kick-ass presentation, drinks on me in an hour, awesome. We can look at Jason's profile. We can also see Jason's location. Let's go back and accept Jason's request. Do I want to add this to my calendar? Yes. As you can see, whether it's professional or social, based on a game or shared interests, meeting people is a snap with Minglebird. Thank you. Kevin, what do you think? Checking in with people and their interests? Instead, you're an investor in Goala and Foursquare. Uh, yeah, this is, this is tough for me because I, I, I feel a little, I would feel a little dorky playing a game and like pulling out my phone and going around and finding people and taking photos with them. Um, so I, I don't know, I've never, I've, I've always been one to like leave technology out when it comes to meeting new people and just do it face to face and not worry about having to try and meet up for points or anything like that. I've always avoided those kind of scavenger hunts or whatever they are that they have at conferences. But that's just me. Yeah, I will say, like, for example, me, when I go to a, a cocktail party or like a mingling event, um, I have a problem approaching people, for example, if I see that they're a president or CEO or somebody like you, I probably wouldn't engage with you just because of the intimidation factor. But the one thing about Minglebird, the game, is it sort of levels that playing field. So everybody gets a chance to meet everybody who's actually playing. So that's what we kind of like about it. It also feels, uh, you know, uh, a little complex. It felt like very complex with all the steps. I mean, whatever you think of Foursquare, it's dead simple. It really is easy to understand rather quickly. Um, I still don't understand what's with all the birds, but that's just me. Um, uh, so it just seems like a lot of steps, and then you have to again create another, yet another community, and there's already so many of these that I'd, I'd want to understand how you would get people to use the thing, because there's at least 26 of these now. Um, and there's one that obviously is pulled in front of all the others, but, and it still has a challenge itself. Well, I think the difference in this community is it gives people a chance to meet right now. For example, let's say we're in this conference setting and I look at my mingle words and I see a common interest. Um, I can meet them in 15 minutes and 20 minutes just by sending them a push notification. So we really wanted to capture the sort of um, idea that we want to meet somebody right now and face to face, not just sending them a text message, following them on Twitter and sending them a direct message. It's actually meeting this person, making a connection, and maybe a business deal. But you have to put in those mingle words, correct? Yes. You have to have all those. So you ha it's another inputting, here's my interests, here my. There's no way you could coordinate it with interests that have already stuck up on 26 other social networks, kind of thing. Right. Um, well, that's a good question, and uh, uh, we felt that it was also an interesting way of actually finding people, because right now, you can search on Twitter, you can, you can actively type in words and, and search for keywords, but I think there's value in seeing what people are interested in. So you can scroll through these words and say, um, you know, I like women's shoes or something like that, and you can actually click on it and see what kind of person is, is interested in the same thing, and connect with them, whether it's professional or social. Yeah, so this is near and dear to my heart because TAG is all about meeting new people. Um, and <clears throat> I think the concept of combining real-time location with interests is very powerful. And so my, my, my two questions would be, one, <clears throat> what, what are the real use cases? Is it really just at big events like conferences and such? Because that's, that's pretty limiting. Or can it be you know, much more broadly applicable? And my second question is, is more like Kara's question, which is how, how are you going to, you know, there, you, suffer, you suffer from a critical mass problem. So how are you going to get all these people to use Minglebirds um, and sign up for yet another network and, you know, get to, get to critical mass? Well, um, as far as, as getting people to use it, what we want to do is really restrict the, um, like the regional use of it, sort of like a Groupon. Um, 
distribution, you know, where we actually do it in one city. Maybe we open it up at a big event. Um, you know, South by Southwest is a nice large event to test this and, and, to, um, and to go out from there. But uh, go ahead and repeat the first question again. Sorry. First question was, um, are the use cases just for big events, oh. in which case it's pretty limited, or uh, are, is there a broader use case you can imagine? Well, I like to hike, and there are a lot of people, um, a lot of friends that I have do not like to hike. They don't like to exercise. So, for example, uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, uh, within a 10-mile radius, you can search for people that have similar interests. For example, you can scroll through the list, and maybe somebody wants to go to hiking on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. We really think that the, the power is that within those mingle words is people can change those immediately. They can change them right now, what they're feeling like. They wake up in the morning, they want to go for a hike. They don't want to go alone. Mm -hmm. Cool. <clears throat> this has been done... Uh a dozen times before, and I, I don't see that it's differentiated enough to, to break out. Um, uh, I remember a friend of mine, Paul Bragill, did this with, with Metro location-based chat back in 2004, 2005, and what they found is um, it's 95% guys who pounce on the 5% of girls who happen to wander upon the system if you leave it open like that. Well, we actually thought of that, and when you request, some, when you request a mingle request, um, you can actually see, the person that received the mingle request can actually see the location of myself, but I can't see where they are. I just know they're within a 10 mile radius, or if I narrow it down between you know, 0.5 or 1 mile radius. So it kind of leaves a, a little that bit of a buffer. stalking, but not spam. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Let's <laughs> thank Minglebird. Well done. OK, next up is savings.com, which is part of our 2.0 competition which basically means an existing company, uh, come on up, savings.com, uh, an existing company that is launching a brand new product for the first time. Please welcome savings.com. Hello, uh, I'm Lauren Bendel with savings.com, and we bring you the best deals on everything you want. We launched in 2007, and last year we drove over $300 million in sales for our merchant partners. We had over 5 million visitors a month, and we also power deals for sites like Local.com, uh, YellowPages.com, Shopzilla, Yahoo, Military.com, and about 100 other properties. Um, what, there's no shortage of amazing deal content out there today. I'm sure all of you guys are experiencing this. There are more deals readily at your fingertips than ever before. But the challenge is, how do you find the time to find the deals that are interesting to you? Of the millions of deals that are available in any given day, where can you find the 10 that might be interesting to you? This is the main request we've had from our users. Show me the deals that I want to see and nothing else. So um, this is what we're going to share with you today. Uh, actually, just last week, the New York, Ti New York Times and NPR both did stories on deal overload. The New York Times said it's becoming more difficult and it takes more time than it's worth to find great deals. NPR noted that in one day of looking for deals of the day in their area, they found a daily deal for um, guns and ammunition, cigars, vintage t-shirts and pole dancing classes, um, none of which were interesting to this particular journalist. So this is what we're trying to solve with, uh, with this. We're launching a personalized deal feed that shows you just the deals you want based on your personal preferences that you tell us and you share with us. For local deals, online deals, daily deals, group buying deals, and tips and advice from experts. So we're going we're to go through a process and create a personalized feed here. Yolanda is a mother, so she selects kids. Uh, she likes to travel. She's also a foodie. And she goes to the next, next page. Now we serve up several brands that she can choose uh, based on those categories and based on other things that we think she might be interested in. On average, consumers are flipping through 13 pages before they select continue. So they're looking at over 100 brands and taking the time to tell us what's interesting to them. Then you enter your zip code and, so we can give you local deals, daily deals in your area. You see that we give you a little snapshot of some of the deals you'll see just to entice you to go ahead and give us your zip code and get to the next step. Um, and then you follow people. By following people, you see deals they like, deals they're recommending, um, things that they're sharing, blog posts that they're writing about in categories that you've expressed an interest in. Uh, and we serve up a few people for you to follow just to get you started. Then you can sign in however you want, Facebook, Google, Yahoo, Twitter, or create your own savings.com account. After you create your account, you get a personalized feed of the best deals based on those things you told us. But that's just the beginning. Every time you interact with the site, you can discover new brands, new people, new merchants, new categories, and personalize your feed more and more over time. So let's see what, what came up. Um, so here in San Francisco, there's a couple of restaurant deals. 
Um, you see H. Simmons, that third deal down there? That's somebody she's following. She recommended a deal, so that shows up in her feed. You see some good travel deals, and she said she likes travel, uh, e-bags. Now, let's, I want to show you how you can interact with the feed. So H. Simmons here has recommended another deal. It's Sports Authority. Let's say Yolanda has no interest whatsoever in Sports Authority. She can click over on the right and unfollow anything. She can say, I don't want to see sports and apparel anymore. I don't want to see deals from Sports Authority. Or she can say, you know what, H. Simmons is annoying me. She's recommending a lot of deals I don't like. Let's just nix her from the feed completely. So she hides H. Simmons, and now when she re refreshes her feed, no deals from H. Simmons will show up in her feed again. So this is how you can personalize the feed on an ongoing basis. You can also, instead of just nixing things, you can add things. You can discover new brands, new categories to follow just by surfing around the site. Anytime you see anything that's interesting to you, you can follow that, and that will include into your feed as well. Um, looks like we're having some Wi-Fi-ish. So, um, so she's looking at flowers and gifts right here. She can select to follow flowers and gifts. Um, she can search for merchants or brands or categories up in the search box, find that brand, follow that brand, and then over time your feed gets more and more personalized. Let's go back to the home page. I just want to point out a couple of other things. Um, we also share with you information. There's a Q&A product on here, a deal specific Q&A product so you can ask a subjective question of the community and get an answer. And we show you questions and answers that are going on in areas of interest to you. There are also blog posts. And let's say, pick on that second one, Stella Luis. You find a deal that a blog post that looks interesting to you. She said she likes travel. Here's a great way to find great deals in hotels. It's written by Stella Luis. So this is great content. You decide you want to follow Stella Luis. You click on Stella's profile. You add her to your feed. Now you're following Stella Luis. Anything she recommends or blog, blogs about or talks about or shares. You can also see what's interesting to Stella in her profile and add those brands or people to your feed. So you can see over time it gets incredibly personalized to just show you the deals that you want to see and nothing else and to help you surf through the deal um, overload that people are starting to experience. Um, the, uh, I just want to show you one other feed. This is a more mature one. This is Joe Zuli. He uh, and his tech team built all this beautiful stuff. He lives in Santa Barbara, so you see a Santa Barbara deal. You see electronics deals, games. This is personalized for Joe. It's very different than the one we just saw for Yolanda. So it's a very specific deal feed personalized to each individual person. Um, and we're launching this in beta today. If you're interested, you can send an email to personalize at savings.com, or if you stop by our booth, we can launch you live today. Thank you. Okay, judges, feedback on personalized deal service. You know, I, I think it's a great idea. We've been waiting for Groupon to do this um, for a long I mean, I, I, for one, am sick of all the stripper pole offers I'm getting. Um, but. The but first, you have to admit the targeting is powerful. It, it, targeting is, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, no, not really. Targeting is really badly done on the web. I mean, yeah. Facebook, all I get is gay cruises it, continually, and I don't <laughs> go on gay cruises. But, um, but you know, it's something that I think what, Groupon's what going to do, exactly is going to actually do rather quickly. They should do, because they're not very targeted. So how do you do, I mean, I think it's a great idea. It's, a, it's, it's very useful to get deals that are... Sure. applicable to you. How do you defend against uh, that? Well, we take deal content from wherever it exists. So we have Groupon deals, we have all of the daily deals, but we also have online deals. Right. And we have tips of your and advice. Own. Yeah, right. yeah. So we, we take it, we don't, we're totally agnostic on the channel that it comes from. We're focused on the personalized experience for the That's user. Right. And you get a piece of that from Groupon if you sell that deal for them? With uh, different partners, we have different arrangements. Most of the deals yeah, that we have, we get Groupon revenue arrangements. Yeah, but I just asked about specifically, but do you yeah, get a piece? We do. Okay. Um, yes, we do. So, so this feels most similar to like a Yip It, for instance. I mean, I think the biggest problem in this category is just how competitive it's become, mm -hmm. and not just on the deal sourcing side, but even on sure. the aggregator and the personalization side. So my, my real question to you is, how do you, how do you, are you dealing with your existing pool of consumers? Is that your advantage here? How do you get new customers? You know, how, how do you break through on the consumer side? It's, it's both. One, the fact that we have scale and over 5 million visitors helps us launch initially. Two, we've got three years of experience dealing with deals and knowing what a good deal is. So I believe we can give a better user experience than someone just starting. Um, we also have su su substantial partnerships that enable us to distribute through several channels. So scale and volume helps us get exclusive deal content as well. About 20% of our revenue comes from exclusive deals just to us. So we have uh, better content, stronger technology play, 
more intelligence behind the algorithm than others, and then it's an execution play. And, and do you have email, uh, do you have registered users and email lists as well, or is it all Correct. just unique yes. coming to the site? What, yes. what number, how, About how a big million, is but we million. just started pursuing that early uh, last year, so we're signing up a few thousand a day and growing. Okay. That was before launching this uh, service. So we have not aggressively asked you to sign up on our site, because I want to do it more with a carrot than a stick. It was free, you could do it, you didn't have to. Now that we have this service, we're going to market very aggressively to sign up. By the way, it's a very, very cool domain. What's the story behind that? How did you get that? Paid a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you got a deal. Yeah. How far can you uh, drill down for deals? I mean, is it just a high level, very big brands, or can you get down to very specific, kind of smaller niche? You can get down to um, very specific. Small. We have over 5,000 online merchants today. Now we're adding in local deal content and daily deal content. We've also, besides just the category, you can get into subcategories. It's not just electronics. You can get down to gaming consoles. So we've, got, we've built a, a pretty complex taxonomy behind all of the deal data as well. And, and to Kevin's question, can you target locally as well, or is it uh, all national deals? We, we absolutely target locally as well. That's, after you enter your zip code, you see the daily deals, the local deals, whether it's from a Groupon or a Valpack or Yelp or City Search. We're agnostic on where it comes from. We just want to give the consumer the best deal on whatever it is they're looking for. I'm, I'm wondering what's the best way for consumers to consume it? Because, um, you know, do I actually want to log into a savings.com account and, and see yet another feed? Or do I want to maybe get a daily email with, with lots of deals? Or um, maybe you can create a custom RSS or Twitter thing I could follow and, and just gets into my existing streams. Have, have you thought about different, it's a, it's different a ways to consume question. it? What we want to do is give you whatever you want. So when you log in, you can sign up for the email, and then you'll get the email every day, every week, whatever your preferences are. Or if you're bombarded by emails, you don't want emails, you just want to come to the site whenever you want. When you log in, you see your personalized deal feed, you can sign up for an RSS feed. We also have an API, so if you're more techy and you just want to integrate it with your site, your own experience, you can do it however you want. Gotcha. Great. So um, based on, on Greg's comment, one powerful thing that uh, you can do uh, that a company called Next Jump does is when you have people interacting with 13 pages of brand preferences, that's very powerful. But for a category like electronics, I might move with a 10% discount or a 20% discount. It's going to take me 50% at the gap or for clothing. Right. And you can actually set those thresholds. And what that allows you to do is when you get enough people on your service, um, you can offer to merchants, hey, you need to make your, make your quarter. We know based on the click-through rate that if you do 30%, you'll release this number of people. If you do 40%, you'll release this number of people. And that way, it's not just for the consumer, but you, it, it turns out to be incredibly valuable for merchants to make their, their quarter. And you can get a lot of engagement that way. Next Jump does. Yeah, that's one of our, um, we're the top sales driver for many of our merchant partners. And they actually will come to our site to see which deals are the most popular. And they've told us they use that data to then drive their offline marketing campaigns as well. What but that like also what allows you to good. do is uh, push relevant emails to people, mm -hmm. the notification aspect, which mm -hmm. keeps them more engaged with your site than having to go back there every single day or tip. get a sort of spam feed every day. I may not want it, but for the brands that I've, I've told you explicitly that I want, all of a sudden you can put that in the, the email title with the, the discount that is compelling to, to me Yeah, personally. I love it. Love it. Thank you. Awesome. All right, thanks, here for savings.com. Thank you. Uh, speaking of shopping, this next one you're going to love, I guarantee. Um, this is back to the 1.0 competition. Uh, Shop Squad. Shop Squad, are you there? And by the way, any of the presenters are welcome to use the uh, leftover ketchup and mustard and fish tank for their presentations. Yeah, we can't get it off stage right now, so we just want to keep going. Okay, right. two more companies. Shop Squad, welcome. Hi, I'm, I'm Charles, and, and this is Mike, and uh, we're from Shop Squad. And my sister just had a baby, and she told me that I had to buy her the best stroller. So I said, okay, no problem. I went to diapers.com, and I searched for strollers, and I got 1,017 different search results. The last thing in the world that I want to do is spend hours going through the search results and reading reviews from unknown people who may or may not know what's up in the stroller space. What I, and more importantly, I don't even know what the right things are to look for. Are car, are car seat latches important? Does it need to have a cup holder? What I really want to do is go to a single website and talk to somebody who knows what's up in the stroller space. They should send me relevant links for me and ask me questions to figure out the right product for me. And this is what Shop Squad is. At Shop Squad, similar to other websites, you, you search for a product. But unlike other, other, 
unlike other websites, instead of seeing a list of products in the search results, you see a list of people. You can refine your search in a number of different ways until you find the exact right expert for you. In this case, I'd like to find someone with a really good star rating, and looks like I will pick Katie. I now have the opportunity to talk to Katie in a real-time environment, and she can, she can talk to me and tell me what's going on in the stroller space. So hopefully we'll connect if, if Jason's wireless worked out for us. Yeah, it, we should. Comcast has been doing a kick-ass job. Hey, yeah. hello, Katie. Hi, how can I help you? Hi, I'm looking for a stroller for my niece. Okay, how old is she? She was just born. All right, where will you primarily be using the stroller? Well, my sister lives in New York City, and so I assume mostly on sidewalks, maybe Central Park. Okay, does it need to have a detachable car seat? No, my sister doesn't have a car, so I think mostly just for walking. Okay, well, I also live in a city, and when my son was first born, the stroller was perfect for me. You'll notice that Katie is able to drive my shopping experience in my browser without any download on our side. This is a unique experience online uh, and something that you don't see in other places. It looks like our wireless kind of died, so we're going to go to the can. Um, in, in addition, so today, uh, Shop Squad makes money from affiliate fees. Uh, and then we pass 75% of those fees back to the experts. So in this case, for the stroller was $750, we would make about $45 of affiliate fees and give 34 of it back to the expert. And not only can shoppers, uh, not only can shoppers, or not only can experts talk to shoppers on a one-to-one -one basis, but they may host a QVC-like show where they have thousands of viewers at a, at a single time. And not only that, but if you forget any of the links that we sent you, we send you an email with all the links that were sent to you, specifically for you, and you can also watch a replay of the entire uh, recorded experience as well. So today, Shop Squad is launching with a focus on the $3 billion uh, baby market, but ultimately, Shop Squad will be the place where 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can get expert advice on any product in real time from somebody who knows what's going on. Thank you. Okay, very innovative. What do you guys think? Um, well, how, how expert could they, I mean, I'm just a little, it's a little bit like Zappos-ish kind of thing going on where you talk to them in that way. But how, how it's not, is it terrifically scalable? Because you need actual people to have these relationships. That's one thing. So it takes a lot of people. And the second thing is, how do we know you're not selling something that you want to sell? Because, you know, when you go into any store, they're trying to move a certain product. It may not be the right product for right. me, but they definitely have products they want to move in retail stores and yeah, specifically so, guide you to them. So to answer the first question in terms of Zappos, Zappos gives amazing customer support, uh, but ultimately the only place where a Zappos expert can help you out um, is from the Zappos store. And so since we have affiliate relationships with hundreds of, of different companies, our experts can, can sell you or show you products from Zappos or any other company that, that sells shoes online. And so that's a really distinct experience and not something that you find even in the real world. Like when you walk into Best Buy and you want to find the right product, they can only sell you products from Best Buy. Whereas in this case, they can sell you products from Best Buy, who's one of our affiliates, or Amazon or any of the other companies we have deals with. So where um, are you getting these experts from? So anybody can sign up for an expert, and it's kind of similar to the eBay model, uh, where experts sign up and, and they get ratings from the community. And so over time, the people with the best ratings will rise to the top, and those are the people who are most likely to be asked for questions. But what, what's kind of in it for them? What's the impetus for an expert? So, they, so, so for one thing, they get paid. So um, as I mentioned in, in this example where the stroller was $750, we would generate $45 and give 34 of it back to the expert. But in addition, and maybe even just as important and, and in some spaces even more important, uh, Shop Squad provides this fun place where people can talk about products that they know and feel passionately about. Uh, you know, for example, if you go to Amazon and type in toilet paper, the first thing that comes up is Cottonelle toilet paper, and there's over 60 reviews about toilet paper. And so people certainly feel passionate enough to, to discuss these things online. What, what prevents like, just someone from hard selling you on something because they want to make that commission? Yeah, so, so we make it very clear from the get-go that the experts are getting paid a commission. Uh, and it's no different, I would say, 
or I should say it's actually better experience than you get in a brick and mortar store where when you walk in, you kind of know when you walk in that if a person is helping you out being a salesperson, that they're going to make more money if you buy more stuff. However, in our case, because you have the feedback from the community, if, if you're the person who's always saying, hey, buy the most expensive stroller and this is the best thing, um, you're going to get bad feedback and very quickly that person will, will drop to the bottom. How important is the uh, kind of real-time video experience? Or could you do it not with video or, uh, or yeah, so, uh, a a asynchronous asynchronously? Yeah, so um, our belief is that real-time is critical. The video stuff for, uh, for baby products is, is less critical. But as we move into other segments like cosmetics or fashion, the ability to see the person becomes a lot more, a lot more important. And so for the experts, they have the opportunity to either turn on their video or, or, or leave the video off. But presumably, that face-to-face -face discussion would give extra value where you feel like, I can trust this person because I can look them in the eye, even if it's over a webcam. So I'm, I'm invested in about three different businesses that have uh, people who get paid to provide services from playing video games to like live ops types things. Um, getting experts, I think, is not the problem. Where are the shoppers going to come from? So, so right now we're targeting mommy bloggers who have a pretty large audience or some of them have, have meaningfully sized audiences and our pitch to them is here's a more effective way for you to monetize, to monetize that that following that you already have. So, so if you have thousands of readers, you may be having some Google ads or something, uh, but here's a way where you can host a show like once a week, say, I'm gonna be live from 6 to 7 p.m., allow all these different, uh, all the people who are already reading your blog to talk to you in real time, so it's another touch point with those people, and by the way, you make some money in, a, in addition to that. Awesome, any other questions? Let's hear it for Shop Squad, well done. Awesome. Uh, and next up is 140 Fire. 140 Fire, are you there? Come on out. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, oh, by the way, if anybody says mommy bloggers, that's been added to the drinking game. You have to do two shots. Um, and additionally, um, you may notice when you use the hashtag pound L11, you get a lot of spam. That's because we trended. Um, so we're now a trending topic on Twitter, which means the hashtag is no longer usable. Okay, 140 fire. Should we change the hashtag? 140 fire. Okay, don't be nervous. It's going to be okay. You can do it. Tyler, 140 fire. Are they okay? Panic attack? What's the story? Hey. Uh, just a second. No problem. Getting mic'd up or something? All right, let's hear for 140 Fire. Hi, I'm Jason. This is Scott. We're working on 140 Fire, and we're working on truly social and interactive video overlay ads for online video. Let's go straight to a demo. So here we have a piece of content from Mad Men. And up's going to pop one of our overlay ads from Grey Goose. So we pull the audience and ask them, um, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? So let's say uh, Tahiti. We'll ask another question. What's your idea of a fun night out? So we select uh, a movie. And then we say, who is your biggest hero? So there's some few celebrities up here. Let's pick uh, Jason Calcanis. So the drink we come up with uh, is the Black Orchid. And using Facebook instant personalization, we can show you which of your friends have liked Grey Goose, the brand, and that actual drink. So you can like this, you can share it, and it's a truly interactive ad by Grey Goose. We'll go to uh, another demo here where we have a concert. And we'll have another interactive overlay come up which says, which BMW are you? So gathering audience data. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the Z4. And we'll show some cool stats uh, about the Z4. But what makes this really interesting is that we'll fast forward the video here to about, sorry, 
to about 35 seconds where the video is going to end. And we actually use that polling data for retargeting. So because I selected the Z4, now we're going to show you a Z4 post-roll video. So BMW gets deeper intelligence. They can serve ads based on what the user's already selected. And now they can increase, uh, an advertiser and brand can increase their, uh, increase their relativity, and a publisher can increase their CPMs. So we can do this, and this is the kind of metrics we can give back to the advertiser. So we can go in here and select, uh, let's see, male 13 to 17 in the video. And we can show in real time to the advertiser what that demographic was selecting and what their preference is. Zoom and we can also show sharing data, et cetera, inside. So we can do all of this with our easy editor. And all the ads you've seen so far could be created simply with uh, a brand, a media agency, um, or the publisher themselves. And we can show the ad style unit, and you can publish the video to any ad network. So Yumi, Brightroll, uh, anyone. Now what's really interesting is that um, we have a real-time uh, CMS as well that can talk to the ad. So this is uh, an example of being able to interact with uh, content in real time. And what we'll do here is we'll show a... One more time. Sorry. One second. Still loading. Okay. This is where you have filler ready. Yeah. Talk about something virtuous about your product. Uh, sorry. Okay. So I mean, I guess I'll explain it until it starts working. So what we can do is uh, we're going to show here uh, a ESPN3 game where Duke is playing Butler, and somebody gets fouled. And what we can do is go in our real-time CMS, we can actually inject, uh, here we go, it's working now. So we, it's you, working on mine, There's a, I think our cable's got disconnected, let's just swap Keep over talking through it. Yeah. Okay, let's just switch it over. It happens. Yeah. Anyway, so what we can do is, uh, let's say somebody gets fouled in the game, what we can do in real time is actually pull the audience and insert a quick question that says, how many free throws will the person make? One, two, or three? And you can interact and grab points inside the video. So this is actually the first time an advertiser is able to capture uh, interacting with high points in a video. So as opposed to traditionally advertising you know, during bathroom breaks or boring points, we can actually now put the brand front and center with the most engaging points of video content. And that's, uh, that's the most important part of what we've been working on thus far. Sorry about this, folks. And if you see on the right side of the page, so what you can do by, uh, by interacting with the content is you can grab points for playing. You can see what your friends are interested in. You have a social leaderboard there that you can compete with your friends. Another, uh, another example of uh, our integration with uh, Facebook. Okay. Good. Let's join up the other one. Yeah, All right. You got it now. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Well, you just moved it. Put it back on the screen. Oh, sorry. Okay. There you go. Uh, Almost there. A little more to the left. Keep going. You can look at the courtesy monitor down here and see the same thing. The monitor down oh, here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that, guys. No problem. Take over. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, you can vote on the number of free throws he hits. Yeah, are we able to do it here? Okay. Yes, we will. I'm going to turn up the live editor, right? So, I think we get it. Okay, so we'll bring up the live editor. We'll we'll show you now. All right, how many free throws will will Zubik make? One or two? Publish. And there you go. Now you see it goes right at the top of the content. We have a Facebook like button, and BMW gets front and center placement over the actual event. And you're so, placing those live during the game. Live over the game. Right. So exactly. you can create on the fly 
quizzes yeah. to engage people into the advertising. Process. Exactly. And then once you know he makes the first three throw. Once he makes the first three throw, we can go back in there and tell the audience if they're right or they're wrong. So as I said before, it's another way for uh, BMW to get front and center placement with high points in video. So now we can increase CPMs uh, for the publisher. Now BMW doesn't get to advertise during bathroom breaks, so it's another sort of defense for them against things like TiVo, uh, DVR. Awesome. And after you select, you get points, and you can do different things with that, such as um, you know, a discount, or sharing with your friends, or uh, you know, it could be lead gen for ESPN just to grab more users to sign up to redeem their points. And that is essentially what we're doing. So you can reach us at jason at 140fire.com. Let's hear it for 140 Fire for fighting through the technical issues. Awesome. Okay. What do you guys think? Real time quizzes, et cetera, and advertising? Kevin, you're nodding your head. You like it? It looks really cool. I've never seen anything like that, and I'd love to experience that in like real time games. And I think it's just a great way to engage the audience. Awesome. I'd love to be able to do that with some of our live podcast stuff that we do, you know, quiz sure. the audience, well, things you have like that. We a live dignation to For do sure. audience polling with GoDaddy as a sponsor. Absolutely. You don't have to stop the show. Now, is this, is this a tool, or are you guys trying to actually build the network? Um, Scott? Well, it's a little bit of both. I mean, we built sort of this turnkey platform that lets advertisers come in the existing system and build the ads with a bunch of different ad styles. They can customize it. It's pretty easy to actually use. And so so, so who's your, is your customer the advertiser or the publisher? Like, how do you get in, into the, the, the ad stack? So there's three, uh, there's three ways to do it. We actually we can work publisher direct with their actual video player, um, or we can serve through, it actually works with uh, Freewill and with uh, Yumi ad serving technology. Uh, or you know, another way we actually just sell it is we go through uh, our partners like OMD and BBDO and some of the other big agencies. And some of those deeper integrations, like uh, you said the live thing, would probably be more involved with the actual publisher. And you're taking a rev share on it, I assume? Uh, we charge differently, um, however way it goes. I mean, if it's an, if it's an agency, uh, we'll charge on a per CPM basis or do a rev share. If it's publisher direct um, with like the live streaming sort of stuff, that'd be like a um, sort of like a big upfront payment. It's it's sort of different around the board. Okay, but you're not actually going out and selling the advertising. Um, no, we are. I mean, we're we're doing some publisher direct stuff with with people like Meta Cafe and with ESPN, um, but we'll also work with uh, with agencies like that will go out and, and sell it themselves. So. So what about um, YouTube? Yeah, what if I have tens of millions of views on YouTube and I want to use something like this, can I? Um, we technically can't do it inside the video player on YouTube. I mean, Not they, today, but we have been talking to, to Google a little bit. So. Yeah, we have been talking with them uh, quite a bit. So you know, if they bought us, then yeah, we could do it. But. Uh, <laughs> What about as um, if it was an overlay or something in a, in a YouTube wrapper on my site? Could I do it there? Um, I think we could. Or we could put it below the video so it wouldn't actually work. It's totally in sync with the player, but you could pull people in real time um, and use the technology. Interesting. Okay. Oh, but, sure, sure. Um, um, do we have a microphone, Tyler? I think we, oh, there it is. Hold on. This. Good recovery, guys, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Never panic. So uh, I, I thought that was, uh, you know, beyond the technical problems, you, you, you went through it. So kudos to you. Um, the product looks actually really cool. Um, so I, I want to dig into it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually watching ET a couple nights ago. I started, uh, you know, itemizing all the different products in the movie, like just for nostalgia's sake. Yeah. But um, I thought it would be really cool for streaming movies to have the products that are in the movie also. Uh, use your technology and you know do quizzes with your friends and everything in terms of you know uh, movies and other types of beyond you know ads and and, and this type of so totally. I think that would be really cool. I mean, we try and like our main focus is to increase engagement and not pe take people off the site. So um, if we could you know show products that are inside the video, let people interact with that, then that's totally something we can do. Um, since we're very focused on content specific type ads. Um, we can do basic things such as like the BMW ad could be over any sort of pre-recorded content. But like the Grey Goose ad, we did that because, you know, Mad Men, like people were drinking cocktails and smoking cigarettes. So we decided to do a Grey Goose ad since it's content specific and get people to figure out which of their friends are watching Mad Men and what they like, you know, what their drink choice was. We also have, uh, Hulu would be perfect for this. Hulu would be perfect, yeah. yeah. 
but you also, I mean, taking people out, I don't think I'd want to participate when I'm watching a movie. I don't necessarily want to look at products in a movie. I mean, I could see it in sports completely, playing games and participating that way, but I have a hard time in other areas. You know, maybe American Idol, things that are live. Perhaps there's more interest in engaging, but I don't know if I'd want to when I'm watching an episode of Mad Men or something. Yeah, it's like the DVD alternate track with the director. It's only appealing to a certain segment of people, but... Well, some of the things... That, live, live events, I could live see Live events that. is a huge win, yeah. You know, what did you think of Jenny Lowe crying on American Idol? Paul. She cried on American Idol? Yes, hello. Yeah. <laughs> knock, knock. Wow. Anyway, yes. I gotta anyway, get something like that, I could see it work. Sure. Okay, awesome. Well done, uh, 145. Okay, thanks. And good recovery. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, so let's... Um, Let's do what we did in session one uh, for session two, life-proof cases, uh, $69 to uh, be safe in your entire life in every way possible. Uh, mingle bird, uh, socialize with the people around you based upon keywords, savings.com, all your deals in one place, in one simple personalized feed. Shop Squad, live experts help you make hard decisions for your products. 145, making interactive advertising uh, for video that doesn't suck. Did you guys have a favorite? Go ahead. I guess 145. I guess that, that would be most use, something I could see being useful and saleable. 145, to another, yeah. Only that they could sell it to Google or whoever. YouTube or whoever. YouTube or whatever. And then the second one, I think what savings.com is doing is important in yeah. this space. Okay, and, awesome. Yeah. Kevin, have a favorite? Uh, I'm tied with 145 and savings. And I think that the Shop Squad, I think, is interesting. There's something there. I don't think they've nailed it, but I feel like there's kind of something there. If I land on a product page somewhere and there, somebody can give me a personal recommendation that's used that product in real time, I can actually see that person, especially if it's a big purchase, that would be important to me. Sort of like a, a next generation QVC maybe, authenticity yeah. maybe uh, an issue there, like how expert are the experts? I mean if it's Leo Laporte or I don't know, if it's Ryan from GDGT telling you what phone to buy, that sounds like... I would pay for that service. Yeah, absolutely. If it notified them and so they could come online and that I was looking at that product and then all of a sudden they appear and I get that recommendation, that's huge. Yeah, there's something in that zone. So you said um, 140 fire and savings.com mm -hmm. and shop squad. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron, what'd you like? Uh, life cases. Uh, I think really? they, could, they could expand their, I think it's small as just cases, but I think you could expand your, your product line and become like the Monster Cables is for all the cabling to all of the accessories and cases which are now often more expensive, not just for iPhones but for cameras, than uh, the actual devices are, are, are becoming. Feels uh, extensible. Yes, it does. Uh, and then savings.com after that. Awesome. Greg, what do you uh, think? My favorite was life-proof cases also because they uh, didn't screw up my, screw up my iPhone. <laughs> and, um, and just to be clear, you didn't know they were going to do that? No. <laughs> They uh, told me it was a magic trick. Ah, they lied. I like that. Um, and, and my, my runner-up is actually uh, Mingle Birds. Um, I, I also feel that they haven't nailed it um, execution-wise, but it's a really interesting space of uh, combining real-time with location with intraspace matching for meeting people. Did you so. see Domo yesterday by chance? Yeah, I thought that so was So compare and contrast, Domo to Mingle Birds, similar mm -hmm. ideas. Which one did you like better and why? Um, I thought, I mean, I, th I thought the ideas were, yeah, were very similar. I mean, it was just uh, me meeting people based on location and interests. Um, I thought the um, <coughs> Domo UI was a bit more interesting um, and, and, and uh, seemed a, seem a bit more use usable. And they uh, definitely were, had a more interesting presentation. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sign. Boom. Boom. <laughs> My first pick would be savings.com. I think it's probably one of the bigger opportunities, and that would be the company I'd be most likely to invest in. Right. However, I'm more passionate about Shop Squad, but it'd be my second choice, mostly just because I really like uh, companies that provide opportunities for people to work from home. Um, however, I'm with Kevin. I don't think they've really carved out their market, and I actually think it should be targeted towards men um, because I help men pretty much every day about what shirts they should buy, and all sorts of stuff, I get messages every day. And I think that, you know, no offense to men, but they need help shopping. Awesome. Uh, Mo, uh, which one are you most likely so, to take a meeting with, invest in? Um, I like savings.com, although I think they have a little bit of an unfair advantage because they have 5 million users. And they are a 2.0, that's correct. A million yeah. registered. So, um, but if you're going to compete in the uh, shopping space, um, given all the noise there, I, I think they have a, a bit of a leg up with an existing community to do something differentiated. Um, and then I, I was kind of 
nothing really blew me away. I, I thought 145, 145 was interesting, but it feels like a tool to me and not a network. And I think it's there's a little, very little value to be carved up in the ad stack right now unless you really build a network. Um, so I'd probably go with Shop Squad um, because I, I think they're on to a big idea. I just don't think the execution is right. So I'd encourage them to think a little bit more about how to how to bring expertise into the shopping experience in, in a streamlined fashion. But there, there's something in that that I think is powerful. Let, let's unpack the Shop Squad a little bit. Everybody seems to be fascinated, but everybody's saying the execution isn't quite there. Can we get more specific? What specifically well, should the execution be? Does I, anybody have a stab at it? I, a couple things that I noticed is I, I think they maybe over prioritize the video. I think, yeah. I think that people tend to do that uh, just because it's video and it's a great medium, but I don't know if you need video to solve that problem. Um, I think also they haven't really thought through how to get the right supply in, in the system. I mean, in, in terms of supply, I mean the right kinds of experts, how do you qualify them, you know, what are their motivations. I don't think, I think they should remove all the monetary incentive. I, I don't think that's what people do it for. I think they do it for other things. And so that, that to me is all about the su supply equation. How do you get the right people in with the right motivations in front of the right consumer for the right purchase? And I think... So maybe take the core like approach I it actually, for status? I actually thought it was a, a bit... It reminded me a bit of Quora in some ways, but I think it's much more tactical, focused, targeted around specific vertical purchasing categories. And I think there's something in that. Let me talk to my other uh, product experts, Aaron, Kevin, Greg, you guys all build wildly successful products that tens of millions of people have used and in some cases paid for. What would you do if you were in charge of Shop Squad to make it better? I, I think that I, I've left a, a, you know, a bunch of star reviews on Amazon in the past um, on a, a whole slew of different products. If there was a way for that platform to contact me in real time and say, hey, there's a person that's interested in purchasing this product, jump on, have a chat conversation with them, you'll walk away with a couple bucks if they buy it, blah, blah, blah. It'll allow me to jump into that conversation. You know, when I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about buying something new and I look on Amazon and it's reviewed by 12,000 people, but yet I can't have a, a conversation with any one of those people that actually owns the product, that like, seems like a, a good kind of little niche or market to go after. Aaron, how, what would you do if you were in charge of product all of a sudden? I kind of like uh, Cyan's uh, I, I idea, um, which is men need help shopping. Um, and if you want to keep the video aspect, men need help dressing as well. So it's almost <laughs> like uh, w w your, your wingman or your wingwoman uh, for the style of your life. She lives across the country. You can't get engaged with her at all, but she can help <laughs> you out tremendously in your local area. It's like left leg in the pants first, you know, then you put yeah. the right leg in, like okay. really basic stuff just to start. Greg, any thoughts? What would you do to change the product if you were in charge? Um, I don't know that I th I've, I have anything super strong to add. Um, I, I do think there is probably too much of a focus on, on a video and a real time. And there are probably just better ways to, to uh, present it. Um, let's take a look at, uh, before we end, session one and session two combined. We saw 11 companies. Just to recap, the session one companies, uh, Room 77, um, Lockify, FTW, Screener.co, Stomp.io, and Stork Brokers. And session two, you remember Life Proof Cases, Mingle Birds, Savings.com, Shop Squad, 140 Fire. Uh, I'd like each of you to pick your absolute favorite. If you could own shares in the company or uh, work for one of the companies, um, which one of the 11 would you pick? You can only pick one. Uh, my, my obvious pick is a Room 77. Okay, we I got think, room I think it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a great idea. It serves a need. It um, has some obvious monetization opportunities, and um, I wish I had shares in it. Okay, uh, I don't get shares in things, but I, I think Room Seventy Seven. I like the Airbnbs of the world. I like all VRBOs, and I like any improvement in this travel area. Awesome, Aaron. You said Room Seventy Seven. Agreed. Yeah, Kevin. I just like to book my hotel and be done with it. I'm not into Room Seventy Seven. It's like yeah. I don't really care that much if I see a little piece of the ocean. Um, I've noticed sometimes when we're out, you probably don't spend all that much time in the room. I don't. No. I'm, I'm actually tend, out you, you socializing. You tend to be out socializing. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, I'm going to say savings. Oh, okay. Great. Cyan. Uh, room 77. Okay, well. Mo. Room 77. Okay, almost a clean sweep. Um, let's thank our judges. They did an awesome job. Um, Mo, Cyan, Greg, uh, Kevin, and Aaron. <laughs> We're going to go to lunch. There's also the startup mentoring occurring upstairs, if you've signed up for that, only for startups. Did anybody go to startup mentoring? 
Has anybody gone? Was it good? Was it helpful? All right. I've heard some really good things. We're going to try to do that more and more, uh, but it's only for startups. So if you're um, like a real estate broker or lawyer, that's all cool, headhunter, but don't take the spots from the startups. We're going to have lunch. Please, please go see those companies on the launch pad. They're awesome. Grand jury, find us a couple that we can put on this afternoon, and we'll see everybody after the break. Thanks again, judges.